Okay, let's talk about Bobby Kennedy's VP pick announcement. The rumors were right from March 16th when the reports came out that he was selecting a very wealthy tech entrepreneur, former wife of Google's co-founder, Nicole Shanahan. Um, his campaign came out, you know, his, his daughter-in-law, Amaryllis Fox, who's also his, she's former CIA, she's also his campaign manager, came out with this long tweet saying, oh my gosh, the media, all their speculation. First, they thought it was uh, Jesse Ventura, and then they thought it was um, football player Aaron uh, Rodgers, and now they're saying Nicole. So, you know, this media, there's just like a circus, you know, acting like, Wow, they don't know anything, and the reality is, is <laughs> the media was right this time, and the announcement came out today. Bobby Kennedy said that it was Nicole Shannon. So we're going to go through the good, the bad, and the conspiratorial uh, on this one. I'm not thrilled with this particular selection. I'm willing to give her a shot as far as listening, you know, hearing her out, finding out if she really would be a good fit. There's something to be said for somebody who's never been in politics. You know, we want somebody who's an outsider. We want somebody who's never been in politics. But the real bad about Nicole Shanahan being selected is that she was the main funder for she's been one of the, if not the top donor to his campaign. In fact, she did the Super Bowl ad. Uh, let me just go ahead and show you this one. So if you remember this, let me just go ahead and play this for you. Okay, this ad was like $5 million, and she paid $4 million of the $5 million. So she paid a lot of money. Um, that doesn't look so good. It doesn't look good that you're, you're selecting somebody who's a major donor. Now, she could be somebody that, you know, she happens to have a ton of money. She made her own money uh, from her own tech entrepreneurship. She had a tech law firm. She founded what it was, Clear Access IP, known as IPWE, a tech law firm that uses AI to analyze and manage patent portfolios for clients. She then left that company and then she became a philanthropist. So I think she made a lot of money, like a decent amount of money as an attorney and, and founding uh, the founder of her own tech AI company. But then I think she became uber wealthy after she married Google co-founder Sergey Brin. And with that money, you know, maybe she's thinking, hey, listen, I got a lot of money. I This is a campaign I believe in. I'm willing to, to fork over cash. And maybe she would have been a, a, an excellent VP pick prior to forking over the cash. Maybe she just thought, yeah, but I have the money so I can't and I, and I believe in this so I can I, I can help and, and this is the way I can help. I can donate money. I mean, all of that is possible. It just doesn't look good. It doesn't look good when you take somebody who's your main, if not, if not your main donor, you're an extra, a top donor and you make them the VP of your campaign. Nobody's ever heard of this person before. Nobody's ever heard from this person before. Um, her journey, she explains her political journey. She just barely kind of woke up to political corruption. In 2020, she was a top donor to Joe Biden. She was a big donor to Joe Biden. So here's somebody that is new to the waking up about, which is great. You know, we want people to wake up, right? We want people to embrace and realize that, the parties are corrupt and that they're just uh, playing along into the system. They're being strung along. That's great. But her sort of awakening happened fairly recently. In fact, she explains that it was just a year ago that she met Bobby Kennedy and she thought he was a lunatic based on all the things that she'd read in the media until she started talking to him. And then she realized that he wasn't the guy that she had read about. But that was pretty recent. That was only just one year ago. Let me just go ahead and play for you a bit of Here's Kennedy. Um, this is the announcement of, of why he selected, why he selected Nicole. And I wanted a vice president who shared my passion for wholesome, healthy foods, chemical-free, for regenerative agriculture, for good soils. I found exactly the right person. And among other things, she has used over the past several years cutting edge technology, including AI, to calculate the catastrophic health consequences of toxins in our soil, our air, our water, and our food. Technology has been a lifelong passion for my future vice president. This is important because I also wanted a vice president who shares my indignation 
about the participation of big tech as a partner in the censorship and the surveillance and the information warfare that our government is currently waging against the American people. Okay, that's great, right? We want the same things. We want somebody who's going to call out big tech, who understands tech. Uh, we want somebody who's also going to be, uh, un you know, looking more into the food and the way we're being poisoned. I agree with all of that. The problem with selecting somebody like Nicole Shanahan, who ha she hasn't proven, she hasn't been put yet that we know of at least in a tough situation where she's tried, where her conviction is actually tested. And that is, people will say they're for, they're against war. People will say they're against censorship. People will say they're, you know, against what I, all of the things. They'll, they'll tell us all the things we want to hear. But then when push comes to shove, when they're tried and they're tested, they cave. They go with whatever is popular, what the people around them um, have pressured them into. They're malleable. They're, you can manipulate them. You can, those are the, that, what we're looking for in a, in a president and in a vice president who may become president if something happens to the president, we want somebody who we know is not going to bend. And we don't know about Nicole. It's great. She gives us the, you know, I, a year ago I woke up and I realized, oh my gosh, you know, everything's really bad. Okay, great. But have you been tested? Have you been tried? Have you been smeared? Have you been raked through the coals? Have you lost a job? Have you had any sort of have you, it's trial by fire in this world when it comes to the types of things we're up against. You're up against the CIA. You're up against the uh, big tech, the alphabets. You're up against all of these forces. You're up against the military industrial complex. You're up against big pharma. You're up against everybody. And have you gone through it? And, and have you found out whether or not you're actually going to pass the test when push comes to shove? That's what we don't know about her. Let me go ahead and play... So he makes this big announcement. He says, you know, I, I, this is what I wanted. I wanted somebody who uh, shares my conviction for all these things. And he goes on. And she's young. She's 38. So she's a millennial. He says, look, she knows AI. She's a surfer. Um, she cares about health and she cares about all these things. I don't really know what her stance is on the military industrial complex. Doesn't really seem to go into that much. But then they play kind of this fancy ad to sort of... Um, introduce us to Nicole because none of us have ever heard from her or all we saw was just a 10 days ago some rumors and some photographs of her so here's the advertisement this is a little bit of it that they put out to introduce us to Nicole can I just say something for me here when he let me just go back actually let's go back to his announcement let's kind of get to the very end here I'm going to skip ahead to the end because he says, you know, he talks about this role like as if it's a Hollywood role. And then they do this campaign advertisement to start off to introduce us to her. And it looks like she's filming, like she's going to be an actress in a role, which maybe that's all this is. Dream. So that is why I'm so proud to introduce to you the next vice president of the United States, my fellow lawyer, a brilliant scientist, technologist, a fierce warrior mom, Nicole Shanahan oh, wait, went on see. to achieve the highest levels of the American dream. So that is why I'm so proud to introduce to you the next vice president. Well, OK, I, I don't I don't have it on there, but it's he says there. I couldn't think of somebody better to play this role. You know, it was, I'm really sure we didn't mean it like that, but it was just, you know, just then when you go into the actual ad and it looks like this and there's, you know, the camera crews. She's a visionary leader and relentless in driving and supporting important projects to improve our lives. Great perseverance, great leadership. Her success is unparalleled. She is an incredibly inspiring woman who touches the hearts and minds of everyone I have seen her bring together. Okay. Hey. Hello. Great. Across the Okay, great. You know, um, I like that she seems a bit crunchy, granola. You know, she had a nose piercing. She wasn't wearing much makeup. She doesn't look like your typical politician. She doesn't sound like your typical politician. I like that. I like that about her. I like that she's younger and she understands the issues that younger people are facing today. I like that as well. Again, the thing I really don't like is that she's his top donor to his campaign. That is just a very bad look. 
to name your top donor as your VP pick when you had plenty of really great other options, other candidates, and people who had who've been battle tested. She just hasn't been battle tested. So I can't trust that if we elect Bobby Kennedy to the presidency and if something happens to him, heaven forbid, I can't trust that this Nicole person is going to suddenly step up and actually be, I mean, look at what they've done to Donald Trump. Look at what they've done to Donald Trump. Do you think Nicole Shanahan is going to be able to stand up to that level of war that they're going to put any sort of anti-establishment outsider through? Could she do that? Because that's what we're looking for. You know, Bobby Kennedy has proven that he is, he would potentially be able to actually deal with that. Um, they, they ran him through the ringer during COVID and he stood strong. And so he's been battle tested. So we know that, yeah, he, he will stand there and he will continue to fight and he won't back down and he'll continue to say what he thinks when he really believes that. Uh, so, you know, there might be some issues I definitely don't agree with him on, but I do know that the guy will, you know, on an issue he seems to care about, it seems like he's willing to be put through the ringer and that's okay, but we don't know that about her. So she goes on, um, this is her, this is, she comes out on stage today and this is her hello. Hi everybody. And thank you so much for being here today. It is so good to be here in Oakland. (laughs) (laughs) This city will always have a special place in my heart. You know, I, I grew up just a few miles from this very spot. My mother, who's standing right there, with her phone up. (laughs) She immigrated here from Guangzhou, China. And my late father was an Irish and German-American. Okay, I like she's half Asian. (laughs) Clearly, I'm biased. I want to tell you a little bit about my childhood, so you can understand the source of my politics and convictions. My mother's first job when she came to the United States in 1983 was as a live-in caretaker to an elderly woman here at Lake Merritt. By the time I was born, she worked as a dental office secretary. Okay, we're just going to kind of move along here. So basically, she goes on to tell her story of how she grew up on welfare and um, and now she's rich and she acknowledges that. I mean, she says, you know, she acknowledges that she's wealthy. And so she's she's been through it all. She understands both is what she kind of talks about. Here's where she talks about meeting or hearing about Bo- meeting Bobby, I think, one year ago. As recently as a year ago, I really didn't think much of Bobby Kennedy because I didn't know much about him. All I had was a mainstream media narrative that was effectively telling me horrible, disparaging things. So this is where she loses me. And it is because, again, it's that battle testing. If just one year ago, you're fine, you were still a year ago gobbling up the mainstream media narratives. I just don't think that you're going to be able to withstand everything they're going to throw at you as a supposed anti-establishment candidate. But let's keep watching. But then a friend who's here today pulled me aside and she said, Nicole, please do me a favor. Just listen to an interview with Bobby Kennedy, just one. So I did, I did. And then I I, I listened to another one and then another one. And I recognized that the person who I was seeing in these interviews was the exact opposite of the media slander of his character. Again, you know, just recent, just recently. I saw a person of intelligence, of compassion, and of reason. I saw a fellow lawyer who had committed himself to finding the truth and fighting for the environment and for people. I discovered a person who speaks out on issues that, even though they are critically important to human health and welfare, are consistently ignored by our government. Okay, so she goes on to talk about how she has a child with autism. Um, and so this is where she starts to, you know, she likes Bobby Kennedy because they align when it comes to the medical stuff very much so. So she talks about having a child with autism. She talks about how the, the chemicals and the electromagnetic field and the pharmaceutical companies are complicit 
and causing a deterioration of our health. So she's very much aligned with him on those issues. Not really sure about the other issues, though, the other important issues. And again, don't know how she would withstand any sort of pressure. Will she crack under pressure? That is what we don't know. And, I, you know, I think a lot of us just don't want to risk having a vice president that if they end up in the position of president, they're just going to potentially crack. So that's my, I know I've said it. I've said it enough. I don't need to say it anymore. Again, the thing that bothers me, the, you know, the, it's the the, bat, the lack of battle testing and also her being a top donor. Those are the things that bother me. There are things I like. I think that if I met Nicole, I'd probably like Nicole. I'd probably, you know, it's kind of like one of those things with George Bush. You know, if you meet George Bush, he's probably a friendly enough dude. You'd want to have a beer and a barbecue with him. And then you find out he's a war criminal and you don't want to hang out with him at all. I mean, I'm sure Nicole is really nice. I'm sure I would like her and, I, you know, I'd want to hang out with her. But then maybe if I talked to her, I'd find out that previously up until now she was a shit lib and she was donating to Biden and she's just barely woken up to this. Well, you know, I'm sure now we'd be like, oh, hey, we get, a, you know, we, we uh, agree on a lot of things because we're because she's now woken up to some stuff. So I'm sure I would like her just fine. I just don't think she's the right pick for vice president. This is a very surprising choice. And it's one that's very suspect because of her donation to the campaign. Now let's get to the conspiratorial. And then we need to move on because <laughs> we do. We're going to talk to Dennis Kucinich, who used to be actually the campaign manager for RFK Jr. So, you know, maybe we'll have a chance to talk to him about this. But um, the conspiratorial. Now, she is Nicole. Uh, Nicole is very much a. Uh, she was a liberal donor. She's a Democrat. She she just came from the Democratic Party. You hear her talking about environment, you know, maybe climate, these types of things. Um, she's going to take away from Joe Biden. This is this this vote right here is going to take away from the the Biden campaign, not from Trump. These they're not winning any Trump voters. It would have been better because RFK Jr. came from the Democrats. He defected from the Democratic Party. Would have been better if they found somebody who defected from the Republican Party to draw in both sides. But this actually looks like Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is trying to maybe. Uh, Maybe he's trying to take take votes away from Joe Biden, in which case Donald Trump would win. Now, somebody would say, well, why why would that happen? Because some people thought that Kennedy was a spoiler for Trump to ensure Trump didn't win and would end up just boosting Biden. Of course, there's still that possibility that he withdraws from the campaign, doesn't go to the general election and instead throws all of his support behind Biden. That could happen for sure. But let's say he doesn't do that. And it looks like he's taking votes away from Biden. So the conspiratorial is that he's such a supporter of Israel and Joe Biden is now caving to the pro-Palestine crowd that maybe RFK Jr. is actually trying to throw votes away from Biden in favor of Donald Trump, who is also extremely pro-Israel, but has Jared Kushner as a son-in-law. And that Jared Kushner son-in-law would, uh, he's the one who drew, drew up the Abraham Accords, which basically put Palestinians in reservations and is an extreme Zionist and good friends with Benjamin Netanyahu. And so there's this idea that um, that he's just such a Zionist shill, Kennedy is, that perhaps this is just an attempt to punish Joe Biden for actually listening to uh, the pro-Palestinian voices and, uh, and caring about his voters in Michigan. That's the conspiratorial. I don't know. Uh, I, I'm not, I, I, I just think that this is a showcasing of Kennedy being still kind of wrapped up in the wokeness, I suppose. I'm not really sure the best way to, to describe this. The, you know, feeling like, okay, I need a woman. She needs to be young. She needs to be of color, right? So I don't know. That it's it, like thinking that that's, well, my campaign manager told me I needed young woman of color and that's the strategy Democrats use with Kamala Harris. And maybe they're thinking, oh, it worked with Kamala and Joe Biden. And so it'll work. And then people are saying Trump might choose Tulsi Gabbard for those same reasons, even though Tulsi is not a popular candidate amongst hardcore Republicans. Um, but I think Republicans kind of feel like, so what? I mean, the hardcore Republicans are going to vote Trump no matter what anyway. So why not give a why not pick a VP that might draw from a different crowd. There's a possibility there. But if that's the case, if Tulsi Gabbard ends up being the VP pick for Donald Trump, uh, then you'd end up with three women, you know, of color as the VPs. Of course, the current Kamala Harris and then Kennedy, 
with uh, with Nicole Shanahan and Trump with Tulsi as VP. So it'd be interesting, interesting. And, you know, maybe they think, oh, we all have to, I don't know, match in order for that not to be used against either of them in the campaign. None of them would be nobody would be able to say, well, your campaign is racist and white if they all select minority females as they're running me. I don't it just kind of it kind of feels like it, it's falling into that category rather than selecting somebody who really, truly would be best for the job. So that's that's my take on this. Um, disappointed. Would love to see Rand Paul. Would have loved to see Thomas Massey. Would have loved to see even Jesse Ventura. Would have loved to see that. Uh, just interesting, shaking it up. And people that have been battle tested. That's what I keep saying over and over. Well, guys, you may be wondering, this didn't seem like a whole show. That is because you're right. This is a clip from a full show. The actual show airs Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. It is a one-hour show, sometimes a bit longer. If you want to catch the whole thing, visit KimIversonShow.com and you can catch the entire show. It is free for you to watch, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, and you can watch it anytime at your leisure. Totally free. KimIversonShow.com. Thanks for watching.